One of the first things you'll see when you open up the MyOpenMath site is a course calendar. So here we have the current date, some information like when the first day of class is or when we have an exam. And handily labeled, we see that we have homework assignments due. Now if you click on a day where there are assignments or a quiz due, those assignments will show up down below. And you can either click on the assignments directly, or scroll down and open up the appropriate chapter and section. When you open up the assignment, it'll tell you something about the number of points possible and when it's due. And if you did some work, it'll say to continue the assessment. Otherwise, it'll say something like start assessment. So let's continue this assessment. And you'll see it gave you a whole bunch of questions. And we have a bunch of information at the top. Here we see our score is 0 out of 13. 0 out of 13 were answered. The most important button here is probably this one here, this square root of 0, which is green. This means there's a math formatting tool on. You'll want to make sure that this is always checked to green. In the assignments, almost all questions have a written example associated with them that you can click on and look at the problem. There's also a video example. Now in the 21st century, you're unlikely to ever have to work with computers outside of a math class. Oh wait, that's the wrong script. In the 21st century, you'll be constantly entering information into a computer. And the thing to remember is that computers only understand exactly what you tell them. This means it's your responsibility to make sure that what you type in is what you mean to type in. Remember, no computer ever lost its job because of a typo. When you click inside the answer box and begin typing an answer, the math formatting tool will appear if the answer is going to require some math formatting. And most of this should be self-explanatory. In this case, we want to enter the fraction 25 fourths, so we'll click on the thing that looks like a fraction. Type in the numerator. Type in the denominator. And the most important thing here is until you click Submit, you have not actually answered the question. In other words, your answer will be there, but as far as anyone is concerned, you haven't actually submitted it. So after you've typed in your answer, make sure you click on Submit. And we see our score. Now the scores are saved as you go. So if you need to leave at this point, this score on this problem is already saved, which means you can come back later and finish the assignment if you have to. There's no need to finish the assignment at one sitting. You can do one problem at a time. Well, let's do a different problem. Now here's something very important. If you ever see this syntax error show up, what it means is you've typed in something that is unreadable. If you try to submit this answer, you will get a zero on the question. So if you ever see a syntax error, do not click Submit. Your answer is wrong because it is unreadable. And remember, no computer ever got fired for making a mistake. It is your responsibility to make sure that you enter your answer in a readable format. Well, let's go ahead and type an answer. So you'll notice that syntax error has gone. So our answer is actually readable, and we can submit. And apparently our answer is wrong. At this point, we have a couple of options. We could jump to answer. 
But we do have three tries to get the problem right, so maybe we don't want to do that yet. So let's see if we can figure out what the problem is, why this answer is wrong, and enter a new answer. Eh, that's not it. There we go. Now, sometimes we can't figure the problem out, so we might want to jump to answer. And this will show us the answer, and if there's a written example available, it will also show us how to solve the problem. Once we've looked over this, we can try a similar question. And this will give us a new version of the problem to try. You have a hundred tries to get any particular type of problem correct. And the other thing you'll need to be able to do through MyOpenMath is to submit the quizzes. These are cleverly labeled as quiz. As before, you can either access the quiz through the calendar or go into the individual chapter and look for the chapter quiz. Again, we have our helpful information screen, the number of points possible, when it's due, and how many times you can take the quiz, and the time limit. It's very important to understand that once you begin the quiz, the time will run down, and you will not get an extension on the quiz. And the quizzes are not too different from the assignment, though you don't have the written answer and the video lesson options. Again, make sure that you have the formatting tool set to on. And here you can check your answer. That is how you submit the answer to the question. If you don't check the answer, the quiz will not be submitted. And the score is presented immediately. We have one out of one point. Once you're completely done, make sure you click on Submit Assessment. Confirm that you're really done. You've answered all of the questions that you're going to answer. But wait, you haven't answered all the questions. Well, we'll ignore that warning. We can see our grade for this quiz. And if we don't like our grade, which is 1 out of 10, we can retake the assessment, and it will generate a new version of the quiz. If you've already taken the quiz a couple of times, here are the scores for all of your attempts. And the thing that's important here is the highest scored attempt is recorded as the grade. So a while back, we actually took this and got a 100%, which is our grade on this quiz.